everyone, welcome to Eaton in the Kitchen, the daily special. Today we have South Bend Steve, Steve for Freddie, uh, regional manager for Crown, Steam, uh, South Bend, and FireX. Uh, Steve is originally from Staten Island, and you'll never guess it with his accent. Uh, he's lived in Florida for eight years now. He's a tremendous, tremendous golfer. Uh, and I know you guys have all been waiting to hear Steve's voice. For those that have been to his training, you know they're awesome. So just like his training up in uh, Fuquay, North Carolina, we're going to have an awesome event today here on the Daily Special. Take it away, Steve. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate the. It, uh, <laughs> I appreciate the the pressure you just put on as far as no as, pressure, pressure for tires, especially the golf. Right? Um, can everybody see my screen? All right. So uh, thanks a lot, Bob. I appreciate you uh, the the introduction there and. Uh, again, yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is Steve Fabretti, and I'm with uh, originally with South Bend, but uh, with the Middleby acquisition of Crown uh, about 18 months ago, we uh, we are now uh, tasked with uh, running the sales and support departments for not only just South Bend anymore, uh, but with Crown as well. So, uh, just want to start off and just give you guys a little bit of a background on Crown before we get into. Uh, the event that we have planned out for you here today. So, uh, you know, Crown is a name that may not be very well known in the industry today uh, when it comes to steam, right? So you have your, uh, you know, premier and prominent steam brands, i.e. Cleveland and Rowan and, you know, even Vulcan, you know, these are names that are synonymous with steam. So, you know, if one says uh, steam, you know, one may think of any one of those brands. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is that Crown actually was the OEM uh, for a lot of those brands in the past, as well as, of course, you know, South Bend Steam, uh, Blodgett Steam, and Market Forge Steam. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is that Crown did make, uh, you know, steam and kettles for not only us, but, you know, brands like the Vulcans, the Groens, the Clevelands, but also like, you know, AccuTemp and, uh, you know, many others. And one of the reasons why a lot of U.S.-based manufacturers you know, sought after Crown to build their product is because, you know, Crown had a very unique way and still has a very unique way of constructing specifically their kettles. Um, you know, their spinning process and spinning is a term used to define, you know, how a flat disc or a, a flat uh, piece of stainless is formed into a bowl or uh, in this case, a kettle. Crown is a very unique method of spinning kettles. Uh, their process is a process that they do cold. Uh, and by that, I very simply mean it's cold against hot. Uh, cold is a very, very much longer process than spinning a kettle uh, hot, uh, but it is also a much safer process. And manufacturers for many, many years uh, called on Crown to build their kettles because of the quality uh, and the workmanship that they put in specifically to spinning kettles in a cold environment. One of the reasons why they can do that is because they are a spinning company as well as a steam manufacturer. Uh, they purchased a spinning company many, many years ago and therefore have access to that technology, but more so many, many more machines, cold spinning machines, uh, so they can produce and keep up with production, you know, spinning kettles much slower, uh, but again, with, with much higher quality. So uh, we've been fortunate uh, enough at Middleby uh, to have acquired Crown, and I've been fortunate enough to, you know, to work with the, uh, the Crown brands. And, uh, you know, we're proud of the product that we've put forth. And, you know, I look forward to spending the next, uh, you know, half hour with you guys, educating you guys on countertop steam, uh, as well as, uh, you know, cabinet-based dual generator steam, and as well as Energy Star compliant steamers, you know, which I think uh, in today's environment, you know, we'll hear a lot more about, you know, as we come out of, uh, you know, COVID-19 crisis, there's a lot of people out there, they're going to be much more, you know, cost conscious, they're going to be looking more towards uh, savings and, and maybe even energy savings, but, you know, maybe look to some, uh, some rebates, some energy rebates. So understanding the whole nature and makeup of countertop steam when it comes to an energy star savings mode uh, is extremely important. Um, uh, with the Blodgett Steam and the South Bend Steam and the Market Forge Steam labeled products uh, in years past, it's important to mention that everything uh, moving forward since the acquisition of Crown by Middleby, uh, everything now that was once labeled Blodgett or uh, South Bend when it comes to steam products is now labeled Crown. And most of uh, products that were labeled Market Forge are now labeled Crown. There are about six, seven, maybe eight SKUs that are still labeled Market Forge, and we'll cover some of them here uh, in our session today. But for the most part, by and large, uh, most stuff 
Uh, most steam that comes out of the Middleby organization will be labeled crown uh, and carries the crown you know, material and workmanship. So let's get started by looking at some countertop steam uh, as, as I put it up on your screen here. You know, you'll notice that there's, I mean, there's a ton of steamers out here to choose from. Uh, and what we wanna focus on is how to select the right countertop steamer. There are so many different attributes uh, that go along with countertop steam, but it's important to remember that it is absolutely not a one size fit all. You can't just go out and say, okay, I want a countertop steamer. I'm gonna go ahead and you know, close your eyes and point to one and then say, okay, I want that one. It is not a one size fit all because it's important, you know, recovery times, batch cooking, you know, energy, all of these things make up the right steamer for the right application. So we're gonna focus on those here today. The first thing that we wanna make sure that we all understand is that there are steamers that are, you know, manual fill, manual drain steamers, okay? And then there's the auto fill, auto drain, as well as these guys right over here, which is the Crown SX3 and SX5 steamer, okay? All of these steamers have uh, operations, you know, that help customers out in different ways. And then there's this oddball guy here, which is what we call a narrow, but also a manual drain steamer. And we'll get to that here in a second, because quite honestly, you know, it's a lot easier to bring water over, uh, in a restaurant than it is to actually bring a new drain uh, to where the steamer is going to be placed. So this comes in handy for that customer that uh, you know doesn't have access to a drain but wants the recovery of an auto filling steamer. And we'll talk about that again. But there are very basic questions and there are very important questions that need to be asked when selecting the right countertop steamer. So of course, you know, what utilities are on hand? You know, that's a very, very basic question, very, very boring, right? We all know we need to understand, you know, do we have gas? Uh, you know, utility or do we have electric utility? Sure, no problem. But the real question is, is, is there water available? Okay, and as I had just mentioned, when you have, you know, this particular steamer right here, you know, yeah, I have water available, but mm, I don't have a drain available. Okay, so in that case, you may be, you know, looking at a steamer like this, but by and large, you know, if you're placing a countertop steamer, uh, most of the time, it's either going to be a manual fill manual drain or an auto fill auto drain. Okay, so when you ask the second question is, is well, let's talk capacity, right? Uh, we really have to think about, you know, how much do I require in my location or potentially how much do I actually anticipate depending on, you know, the customer and, and where he's at, you know, with his business, okay? So typically, and, and I believe this to be the case with most steam manufacturers in the marketplace today, there's typically a number uh, embedded within the model number of most countertop steamers. It's important for everybody to remember, while we all know that there are two and a half inch deep hotel pans, there's four inch, there's six inch, there's eight inch, okay? Typically the number embedded inside of a model number references two and a half inch deep pans, the maximum number of two and a half inch deep pans uh, that a steamer can, can handle. So, you know, of course in these uh, examples to the right here, the SX3, the SX5 here. Okay, so that means the maximum number of two and a half inch deep pans I can put in this steamer is three, as opposed to this one, which is five. Again, very, very basic questions. But as you move on, now you start to ask the questions that are extremely important to the customer, okay? So, you know, what are you doing mostly in your steamer? Are you doing mostly seafood? Are you doing mostly protein? Are you doing mostly vegetables or potentially starches, right? Now, that's not to say that any one of these steamers cannot handle all of these products or some of these products. The question is, and what, what's important to understand, some just do it better than others, okay? And you have to understand that before we select the right steamer. But I think this is the question that really comes into play, okay? Is this a batch cooking operation? or is this an a la carte cooking operation, or is it both, okay? Typically, the market is pretty much 75 to 80% batch cooking, okay? When I say batch cooking, you know, everybody on the call, I'm sure knows the differences, but, you know, as we, you know, equate it to a, a, a simple term, it's schedule time in, schedule time out, right? And that's pretty much what it comes down to. If we think of that kind of an operation, you know, we probably would think quickly, your school, your healthcare facility, your nursing home, institutional corrections, you know, stuff like that. But the truth is, is most restaurants, a lot of restaurants are going to be mostly batched during the course of the day. You know, the steamer is going to get turned on in the morning, you know, and potatoes are going to start being, uh, you know, steamed or, uh, you know, vegetables or, you know, some, some seafood is going to start, you know, being prepared in this, in the steamer. There's a, there's a lot of different uh, examples of how we batch cook, but more importantly, you know, Later on in the day when the restaurant gets busier, is it going to be a little bit of a la carte? Is it a catering you know, facility where you know, all of a sudden you know, there are 20 extra plates 
that now need to be, you know, accounted for, you know, at a dinner function or at a banqueting function. Okay. So these are questions that we need to make sure that we connect with our customers to find out exactly what it is that they're doing. So we make sure that we select the right steamer because batch cookers are completely different than cookers that are bred for higher and quicker recovery. So therefore you can actually cook in an a la carte manner. And then finally, your energy star is always a question, right? Or I should say maybe in some regions more of a question than others. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of research on energy star. Uh, I know it's not a very, very big thing here in Florida, uh, as opposed to some other states around the country where, you know, I mean, you're looking at some rebates uh, kicked back from, you know, the energy companies upwards of $2,000 per cavity, you know, compared to some other states, you know, primarily in the South where, you know, the energy star rebates are much lower. Okay. So regardless of where you are, you very well simply can have a customer that just wants, you know, the benefits of saving energy. And that would be these two units right here. But if you remember earlier, I had said these two units are manual fill manual drain units and manual simply means, well, you're going to have to work hard to make sure that they continue steaming your product. These units down here are from Market Forge. As we said, there are still some items that are branded Market Forge, and that would be these two, two units down here. Okay. Now, these are auto fill, auto drain units, but they carry the Energy Star logo. And we'll talk extensively about these units and where the perfect application is for them. So, on the surface, when you look at all of these steamers, you know, just by looking at, by the eye, you know, it might be difficult to tell, you know, which one is which. So let's get in and, and define the differences between batch, first batch, and a la carte. First, as I had mentioned, these are manual fill, manual drain steamers, okay? And they are bred for batch cooking only. And why is that? Well, if you look at the inside of this particular steamer, you know, very simply, this could very well be your similar steamer that you're making on your range top in your home, okay? You go in the cabinet, you go pick out a pot, you add a little water to the pot, you put your strainer on top, and voila, you've basically built a steamer right on your range. It is manual fill, and then when you're done, you're gonna carry the pot over to the sink and you're gonna dump it out. There is no connection, also known as connectionless. If you look inside of the steamer, you can simply pull out this perforated pan here and then see where the water you would pour it in. So if you call up this little blue lady right here and she comes over with her pot of water and she pours it inside of the steamer, that's exactly what she's going to do. She's either going to pour it right in here or she's going to remove that pan and pour it in here. It is a manual fill, manual drain process. Okay. Now, when you think about the applications for something like this, a lot of people ask us, well, you know, is this steamer good? Uh, do I have to worry about cross flavor contamination? And the answer to that question is mostly not, okay? Most countertop steamers are not pressure vessels, okay? They are what is known as an atmospheric steamer. It vents into the atmosphere. When you're venting into the atmosphere, you're releasing all of the flavoring and all of the, you know, the aromas and uh, everything that's venting into the atmosphere. So for the most part, when steaming product, vegetables, you know, potatoes, rice, uh, risotto, stuff like that, you don't have to worry about cross flavor contamination. I can steam a cake in here along with risotto, even if it's filled with tons of butter, uh, I don't have to worry about cross flavor contamination. Where I do have to worry about cross flavor contamination is if I try to put a tray of you know, salmon or seafoods, any kind of seafood that is going to expel protein out of the seafood. So if anybody has ever you know, cooked seafood uh, perfectly or maybe slightly too much, you'll notice the white film or uh, the white that comes out of it. Okay, um, I forget the name of that. I, I forget the name of that ingredient, but it's actually coming out of the protein. And in this case right here, because this is an auto uh, manual film, manual drain, where is that protein flavor going? It's going back down into the water reservoir. And what are you doing with that water? You're basically steaming that water back up into your product. So. Nonetheless, a cake and protein or a cake and seafood in here would absolutely positively not be a good idea, okay? Again, mostly a batch cooker. If you wanted to put seafood in here, what do you have to do? You have to drain the water out, okay, and put fresh water in if you're going to put a different kind of item in here. But again, it's made mostly for batch where the door is going to be closed, schedule time in, schedule time out, okay? Now, with that said, some of the features that it's important for you guys to know is that all of Crown steamers are already lined with 316 stainless steel, okay? So if you look at all of my competition out there, 
um, you know, their specifications clearly show that their steamers are lined with 304. Now, 304 has always been, you know, a pretty basic stainless steel that is used for cooking uh, in a steam environment. If you look at the makeup of 304, it's made with a certain amount of carbon, it's made with a certain amount of nickel, okay? When you wanna upgrade it to 316, they basically play around with the uh, percentages of elements that are built into the stainless, but they also add in a material or an element called molybdenum. And by adding 2% molybdenum uh, to stainless, to 304 stainless, and adjusting the carbon and the nickel, you basically create a stainless steel that is much higher resistant to corrosion over time. So areas like we are here in Florida, you know, where salt exposure is extremely high, no customer should, you know, have a steamer that has not been upgraded to 316. And this is for longevity. If anybody has looked at a very, very, very old steamer, they may have seen, you know, pits or uh, what is known as maybe a sandpaper finish on the inside of their steam cavity. Because items that are in a steamer for long periods of time, and I mean, you know, over, over time, years, of course, you know, uh, they start to break down the stainless. You know, again, you know, very high salt exposure, you know, high acidic products, you know, stuff that is used with, you know, a really, really high content of seasoning, like Old Bay seasoning and stuff like that. You know, that is the kind of stuff that can wear down the interior lining. So any customer needs to upgrade to 316. Well, in most cases, you know, that is an upcharge, okay? With us, we include it standard with the purchase of any one of our countertop steamers. So you don't have to worry about upgrading to 316. It automatically is included in countertop steam, okay? And that's very basic with our manual fill, manual drain steamers that I'm showing you on the screen right now, but it's also inclusive of any of our other steamers that we're going to talk about during this uh, webinar as well. The other thing that I wanted to make sure that I pointed out as well is, you know, from a convenience perspective, all of our steamers are field convertible. Um, I'm not sure the makeup of everybody on the line here, but you know whether you're an end user uh, in a school or a restaurant or a, a dealer or a designer or whatever, it's nice to know that you know if you are working with a customer or a customer needs a piece of steam relatively quickly. You know the bottom line is is us manufacturers we want to have everything in stock, but it's a supply and demand situation, right? I mean I'm not going to keep things in stock that are just not you know they they just don't sell very much. I mean that's just the cost of doing business, right? And the risks that we face. In a case like this, you know, a single phase unit may not be as popular as a three phase unit or vice versa. You know, what we do is we make them field convertible. So if you need something relatively quickly from Crown, you know, when I have a three phase in stock, but you need a single phase 208 volt unit, well, I can send you a three phase unit and we can call the local service company and commercial or whoever, and they can come out and they can convert it. It will actually take him longer for him to park his truck go into the back of his truck and grab a screwdriver and walk in, it'll take, it'll be longer for him to do all that than it would have been to take the side panel off and switch around a couple of jumper wires. And it's, it's a done deal. Okay. So it's noteworthy to note that, you know, you guys can have that flexibility of knowing, you know, you may get a single phase or a three phase, you know, in an emergency situation, but it is easily field convertible. Okay. Now we'll move over to a situation where we're working with customers that, you know, need a little bit more flexibility, okay? They're batching, you know, for most of the day, but then they need to safeguard against some a la carte operations. So this is where it's very important that you pick an autofill, auto drain steamer, okay? Because with autofill, auto drain, your recovery is much quicker. Why? Because there's a steam generator tank in the back of the steamer that as the product is absorbing steam inside and while cooking, okay, the excess steam is of course turning to a condensate, okay, and draining out the back of the steamer, as opposed to, you know, the earlier models we, met, we mentioned where you're manually filling it. If you look at the back of the steamer, you'll see that you have a water connection and you see that you have a drain connection, okay? So if I were to pull these out so you can see them a little closer, you see your water connections are what we call split water line, okay? Which means that the plumber needs to understand that he needs to connect this steamer one where it's gonna be filtered water and one where it's gonna be unfiltered water, okay? Filtered water, you can clearly see, is the water that's going to go into the steamer, into the generator tank, turn to steam, and then inject itself inside of the steamer cavity. Condensate water is water that does not need to be filtered because it's only going to mix with the condensate water or the water vapor that is going down the drain. The reason that is, is because the water going down the drain must be lower than a certain temperature. And in most locales, I'm gonna say 170 or 80 degrees, okay? It's gotta be lower than that or 150 degrees, okay? 
that is set up so that cold water will mix with the condensate water so that it goes down the drain in a safe temperature, okay? Now you look at the drain here, this is a depiction of how a countertop steamer, and I would even say most of uh, even my competitors would need to connect in such a manner here where you're gonna have a vent pipe. Remember I use the term atmospheric steamer because it is always venting into the atmosphere, okay? And then your condensate or your water is dripping down the drain and there's a gap here uh, in between of a minimum of two inches, okay? And the reason that is, is if you take this steam uh, line here or this drain line and stick it down into the drain, okay? It's not gonna work because by doing that, you actually almost create some pressure down there. And what'll happen is, is that because it's not free and clear and easily dripping down the drain, it's gonna build up and it's gonna back up back into the steamer. We see a lot of installations where right out of installation, you turn it on for the first time, you know, everybody's very excited, they turn the steamer on, and then it's, it's creating steam, and then all of a sudden, water starts pouring out of the front door, and everybody wants to know the reason why. It's simply, you look in the back, and you see that pipe buried inside of the drain, and therefore, it's got no way to breathe, and it can only come out of the front of the steamer, okay? So that's your autofill, your auto drain units. Now, as I transition over to this slide right here, I want to show you the inside of this unit. I mentioned your uh, auto, uh, manual fill, manual drain in your EPX or your EPXN models are 316 liners. My SX3 and my SX5, which are auto fill, auto drain, are also 316 liners. But notice the difference of the interior of this unit. This unit does not have a water basin or reservoir or however you want to term it. This has a standard, you know, stainless steel interior, 316 stainless, but it also has these steam jets that this steam is going to enter into the cavity almost in a convection mode. It's going to inject in at a much higher rate and a much faster rate, okay? And therefore creating some turbulence inside of the cavity. Therefore your product is going to cook a lot faster because the uh, steam inside is almost convecting, if you would. There's much more turbulence, okay? The way steaming products works is when you put steam inside uh, a product inside of the steamer, it's going to absorb as much steam as it can for as long as it can. Throughout the cook cycle, product will only absorb steam at a certain rate. So as the cook cycle is going on, it's absorbing less steam, less steam, less steam until you actually remove the product. As it's absorbing less steam, it doesn't change the amount of steam entering into the cavity, it changes the amount of water that's going down the drain. So it's important with steam to recognize the fact that, you know, we try to get stuff in and out of the steamer uh, as, as you know, regularly as possible, not just for the product sake, but for also the water sake. The more hot steam that goes down the, cavity, uh, the drain, the more cold condensate water has to come into the cavity. And therefore, this steamer right here is not Energy Star because it's going to use much more water. Okay. However, we safeguard it by introducing a Middleby water treatment system that is used with all of our countertop steamers. And in a lot of cases, these water treatment systems are at a, you know, a drastically reduced price to work perfectly together with the SX3 and the SX5, okay? Now, with that said, I wanna make sure that we really clearly see the differences between the two. Here's a side-by-side a, a -side picture of what we saw before where you had your water basin and your SX3 or SX5 without that water basin. Okay, so I'll just pause here for a second. Does anybody have any questions? Did you, I think you can raise your hand or type in your question. Please, you know, help yourselves to do that. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody's audio is on, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, I'll just uh, wait a couple of seconds for some questions. Steve, if they raise their hand, I can unmute them so I can talk. Okay. Any questions? Okay, well, if there's any questions, please help yourselves to to jump in uh, and ask whatever questions uh, you feel are. Uh, uh, you need some more information on. So we move on to some new units that, quite honestly, are a little bit different in the industry today, right? These are these are the oddballs, I like to call them, right? So you have this particular steamer, and anybody uh, that has ever worked in the back of the house before, you know that space in the back of the house is at an absolute premium, right? So we actually make an auto-fill, auto-drain unit, which, again, holds the same standards of a better recovery because it's auto-fill, auto-drain, but it's only 18 inches wide. Now, of course, it's only a four-pan unit, but it's 18 inches wide, it's called our narrow unit, and this is to give up some space in the kitchen 
um, you know, again, you know, space is at a, at a premium. So this cuts back on approximately, you know, anywhere from four to six inches. Most countertop steamers will run anywhere between 21 to 24 inches. And this is an 18 inch unit. We also have this unit off on the side, which is the same narrow uh, setup unit, but this is autofill manual drain. Okay. So this is going to give you better recovery than the first steamer we talked about on the, you know, the manual fill manual drain. It's going to give you better recovery because it's going to automatically replenish that water for you, you know, and keep steam going. But for those applications where they will not spend the money to you know, add a drain in, which is, you know, highly expensive, uh, we offer a manual drain unit so that, you know, you can run water to it, but you don't have to worry about filling it in with a drain. Okay. Now, just to show you a couple of more examples of some of the other uh, benefits that we have and some of the other features that we can do for you, what you see up on the screen right now is a stacked unit stacked at our factory. This is what the piping would typically want to look like if you added a unit to the field and you brought your plumber in and said, hey, look, I need to pipe these things together. Uh, it needs to look like something like this. Now, uh, if we pipe it like this at the factory and you wanted it stacked, this is the way that it would come. But if you were existingly, if you already had a three pan uh, or a five pan and you wanted to add one on top, uh, your plumber, you know, may put something together like this, or quite honestly, he may just pipe them individually. That's okay. Either way, you can see, you know, the vent pipe for the top here. And then of course your drain pipe down at the bottom. And this, what we did was we piped them in together uh, for water in. You can see the two different uh, water inlets for both steam. You know, one is clean steam and one is unfiltered. Okay. So this next slide here shows, you know, just some of the, the features and benefits comparisons between the countertop steam. So, you know, I would never take anything away from, you know, these brands that I'm showing up on the screen here, you know, your Cleveland's, your Vulcan's, your Grown's. These guys have been doing steam for a long time. Uh, but it's important to note that, you know, we're trying to do things differently here. We're trying to say, you know what, you know, we're going to give you a 316 liner compared to that 304. And we're going to give that to your standard. Okay. We also give you this nice feature here called a hands-free handle. Now, these guys over here do the same thing, uh, but this is some of, you know, some of the convenience features that I think are very much overlooked in our industry. Uh, as salespeople, you know, we need to make sure that our customers understand you know, their options. If I pull this out, you can see my handle right here, and it's much the same as this handle here and this handle here. But notice this handle right here is embedded inside of the door. Okay? So what that means is, you know, remember I said earlier, you can get about eight to 11 pounds of product in a two and a half inch deep pan. Well, you just simply need to walk over to the steamer with your tray and, you know, lock the, uh, the pan up underneath the handle and push the handle up and all of a sudden the door opens, okay? You'll need to touch this with your hand, okay? You know, and especially in today's day and age, you know, everybody today and, and when we come out of this is, is definitely going to be a little bit more conscious about touching things and about germ transfer. You know, this is a great way of saying, hey, this is a hands-free handle. There'll be no cross flavor, I'm sorry, or cross contamination on these handles. Uh, nobody will ever need to touch the handle. You'll always open a handle with a pan or something else. Okay. And as I had said before, you know, our steam comes with a Middleby water treatment system. Okay, so you can compare that against my other competitors here as well. And you'll find that uh, our treatment system is way far advanced than any of our competitors out there. Okay. So I want to take a moment and I want to talk about twin generator units because I had mentioned before that, you know, uh, simply, you know, you can stack some units, right? You can stack them and they may look like stacked units. And these twin generator units very well look like stacked units, but they're a little different, okay? These are twin generator units with a cabinet base, okay? And what that means is, is yeah, it's very similar to two, you know, two standard SX3 or SX5s with a cabinet base, but this is built with a cabinet base. So in some cases it may be storage, and in some cases we may put the generators down there, okay? What is important to note here is the two 47,000 BTU generators that is in this unit on the left pretty much is the standard, okay, in our industry today. Anywhere between, say, 45 and 65,000 BTU generators is pretty standard, making the total somewhere around 95 to 120 or 125,000 BTUs total. If you've ever sold a boiler-based unit, you may look at this and you may say, wow, those are boiler-based units. Well, no, they're not. There's no boiler down below. They're individual generators. But you may have sold in the past 150,000 BTU boilers, 200,000 BTU boilers. 
Crown makes a twin generator with the highest power in the industry. We're giving you two 95,000 uh, BTU generators, which is the closest to the same power of a 200,000 BTU boiler base. So you can clearly see, I'm giving you the advantage here of having two twin generators, 95,000 BTUs a piece, which is the same kind of power as a boiler base unit, okay? And people buy boiler base for a couple of reasons. Number one, the power, right? You have a boiler based unit, you want it because it's gonna offer you a lot of power, okay? Number two is it's going to feed maybe, uh, you know, an additional piece in your line, right? It's gonna feed a kettle at some point, or you may think that, you know, uh, you may wanna add a kettle down the line, so you'll get a boiler base. And then the third reason, quite honestly, is because that's what you've had before, right? Um, you know, it, it, it takes some conversation with a customer to move them from a boiler base to an individual generator, especially if it's a direct steam boiler base where he's actually feeding the boiler, you know, from, you know, with house. Steam. And we'll discuss some, some advantages and, and some differences in our heavy duty segment of steam. I believe we have that scheduled in the next week or, or 10 days or so. So getting back to a twin generator with 95,000 BTUs uh, of power in each one, the benefit here is, well, if one generator goes down, you can always use the other, mo you know, the other cabinet, as opposed to a boiler base, where if the boiler goes down, you're basically out of luck, okay? And again, this has the closest power to a boiler base unit. One of the things that this model does much different than anybody else in its category is we actually thermostatically control the quench or the condensate. So remember I talked earlier about, you know, draining water out or, or condensing the water so it, it tempers it down to a temperature that's safe to go down the drain. Any one of these steamers that are not Energy Star are using a fair amount of water. And what kind of water are we talking about? Well, we're talking about anywhere between 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 gallons of water per hour. That's a lot of water, okay? This unit right here cuts back on that amount of water because we actually measure the temperature of the water going down the drain and only add in cold water when we need to add in cold water. So it cuts back on the amount of water that we're simply bringing into the steamer and then cutting back, okay, and then sending down the drain. With that said, uh, this also has a benefit because the D-line ports are down at the bottom. Compared to this unit right here where the D-line ports are off to the side where you need a little bit more clearance on the right-hand side of the steamer, here it's down at the bottom, okay? Now, both of these steamers, obviously this one right here does not have any storage space because the generators are down there. This one, I believe, has the gas valves down at the bottom, so you don't have much storage space down there, maybe for a couple of pocketbooks, I guess, if you absolutely had to. But the electric unit gives you access to a full cabinet base where you can use for storage. I believe in the seven pan model, we can actually even add in a shelf for more storage space down below. The electric model here comes either, like I said, a seven pan, which would be the three four, or a 10 pan, which would be the five five. And if I take all of these units and uh, specifically the, ga the gas units and I stack them up against, you know, some of my competition, as we talked about, you know, comes with my middle B water treatment system. Okay. But look at the power differences between my GSX 10 HE and all of the other twin generator models that are on the market today. Okay. Plus I give you 316 stainless. Plus we have the hands-free handle as well. Now, again, a couple of these other guys have that, but this guy over here does not have that. So again, not taking anything away from the competition. But it is noteworthy that there are definitely some features and benefits uh, that will help uh, in our product getting out there, number one. But your customer is getting a better product and better power and better longevity with a better stainless steel. Okay. So I'm just going to pause for one second, see if anybody has any questions. Okay. So in our final segment here, uh, we talk about Energy Star. Okay, and I bring Energy Star in at this point because we've covered a lot of how steam works and, you know, some of the products that we can think about that's going to go into these steamers and, you know, uh, you know, what kind of applications they would be used for. What's going to happen is, is you may have a customer that wants to learn a little bit more about Energy Star. And here's the reality, okay? Yes, there are advantages to Energy Star. There are, you know, reduced energy consumption and energy bills, of course, which cuts spending. You can utilize those, you know, savings in other areas, of course, you know, rebates, right? Most customers at the end of the day are looking for those rebates. I, and I totally get it, right? We, you know, they're, they're out there, so let's take advantage of them, okay? So I get that. But it's also important to understand that with 
getting those rebates. And with cutting back all of the energy, you're also clear as day going to be lower power, which in electricity, in kilowatts or gas in BTU. And I think one of the best parts, of course, is lower water consumption. However, when you lower the energy, you are lowering or reducing your recovery time. So it's important for us to make sure that we're talking to the right people, that they understand there is a clear difference between steamers, okay, that are 84,000 BTUs compared to 190,000 BTUs, okay? There are big differences there. There is clear differences between, you know, generators that are 10 kilowatts compared to generators that are 17 kilowatts, okay? I'm not saying that, you know, they won't operate because in a batch cooking environment, they are absolutely perfect. And we'll cite some examples here of where these steamers are work absolutely perfectly for. But as we change in our economic times, there's going to be more push on savings. There's going to be more push on cash. There's going to be more push on price. Um, and it's important to note that Energy Star carries a lot of that, but it also needs to understand that we're also changing the way we operate and the way the steamer operates. Okay. So what this included is a free water filtration system that automatically comes with this unit labeled the ETP 10E or 10G. Okay. It has a built-in water management system that as we talked about before, I am monitoring the water temperature going down the drain, and I'm only making sure that there is condensate water, okay, or quench water to bring that water down that's going down the drain only when it's needed, not constantly running, okay? The advantages to this unit are clear on the screen, right? Less than seven gallons of water per compartment per hour. I'm not sure if anybody picked up on some of the water consumption I had men mentioned earlier, but you know, in, in high volume applications where the steamer is constantly being used, some of the other steamers we've talked about can go anywhere from 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 gallons of water per hour, which is fine in certain applications. And those are extreme examples. I wanna make sure that we understand that, okay? But here you're at less than seven gallons of water hour, which is great, okay? This steamer right here is only 64 inches in height. Now, this may mean a lot to some, and it may not mean a lot to other people, but in my opinion, this perfect and all of these features and benefits fit perfectly inside of a school application. Number one, it's got Energy Star rebate, okay, which a school system, of course, is going to take advantage of. Number two, it is mostly a batch cooking environment. Schedule time in, schedule time out. Number three, it's going to use less water. Or it's only 64 inches in height. You know, most of the, the lunch ladies and most of the lunch personnel that are working inside of the cafeterias, you know, if the steamer is too high, nobody wants to put a tray or even in a convection oven, nobody wants to operate anything on that top shelf because it just doesn't feel safe. Loading it, loading it up may not be a problem, but removing hot product out of it may be, you know, uh, uncomfortable, you know, for some people inside of the kitchen, okay? It also is a two-year warranty, but I want to focus in on it's a holding cabinet as well. Nobody else in the industry offers a twin generator with Energy Star compliance as a holding cabinet as well. And when I say holding cabinet, I mean that after the timing cycle, you can go ahead and set this steamer up and put it in a hold mode, okay? And it'll hold the product in there between 130 and 150. So if you hold it at 130, it's not going to form bacteria because that's the safe temperature in which bacteria is going to form. It's not going to go above 150, which is great because it's not going to continue to cook. It's only going to hold between 130 and 150. And nobody has that in the industry in an Energy Star dual compartment or twin generator unit. Okay. Most importantly to the school, I think it really, really resonates in the entire school district. And I'll tell you why. Because none of my competition has a gas and electric unit, okay? I am the only one that has this model in an electric and a gas model. And why that's important to a school district is because I can take the ETP 10E or G, depending on the utility, and I can put it all over the school district, and I can make sure that everybody knows how it operates because the controls are exactly the same. Somebody doesn't have to move over to a different school just in case there's you know, labor issues or call outs or whatever, they don't have to worry about going to another school and having to work a different steamer. They can simply use this steamer because the controls are the same. Nobody inside of the uh, school kitchen really cares about the utility that is running the steamer. They just care about the operation.
okay? So this is a prime choice for schools. It has all of the bells and whistles for schools. It's a batch cooker perfectly. It can be used for some a la carte, you know, situations, you know, some last minute a la carte. But again, just so we know, it is certainly not going to cook as fast as, you know, some of those 125, 130, and especially 190,000 BTU unit or as well as a 17 kW. Okay. So with that said, there's a couple of things that are out there on the internet uh, that really showcase, you know, some of the, you know, the benefits of these two models. Okay. So I took this unit here. This is the gas unit that compares against the Cleveland gas unit. Uh, and I'll show you this here, which is a calculator. Okay. I didn't make this calculator. Uh, anytime that uh, anybody as a manufacturer wants to, uh, you know, get Energy Star certified, what do they have to do? They have to go to uh, a company called Fisher Nickel. Fisher Nickel tests your equipment and sees if it meets the Energy Star standards. They have this calculator online. Well, all you simply need to do is enter in the model number up top, and it gives you all of the energy savings over an annual period and over a lifetime period. And you can clearly see the differences between the two here, okay, that really showcase, you know, the differences between the energy uh, benefits of our model compared to my competition in this space right here, okay? And then you have, you know, benefits of uh, the electric unit, you know, compared to the Vulcan unit over here. Again, same thing where, yeah, okay, it's, you know, slightly similar in water consumption, but lifetime savings, you're looking at over $3,000 lifetime savings. And this one has the water treatment system already included in the body of the UTP steamer. Okay. And finally, there's one more steamer I'd like to talk to you guys about. Last one, it's called the boilerless technology, okay? This is, seems to be a little bit more popular uh, as time goes on. Again, you know, price, cost, all of this stuff is being taken into consideration these days. Uh, with the Altair or Sirius, okay, these are branded Market Forge. They are countertop models or they can be stacked, all right? Uh, they come in four pan, six pan, or if you stack them, you can go eight pan, 10 pan, or 12 pan. Okay, they qualify for rebates. They are using far less energy, far less water, and there's no deliming. Why? Because it is a water basin, water bath steamer. Okay, the difference is it is auto fill, auto drain. Okay, so we go back to some of the things we talked earlier about when you have a water basin steamer or water that's in the cavity, you have to be careful with cross flavor contamination. And that is absolutely the case with this particular model. This model right here is absolutely not an a la carte steamer. It is purely made for batch, okay? And if you're gonna mix seafood with other items in here, you have to manually drain it, which it has that option as well. So it can be an autofill auto drain or autofill manual drain, okay? But the key with this unit right here is a feature that nobody else has, okay? And that is the feature of a three uh, stage setting or three temperature zones that you can actually set this unit up for. So in the preheat model, I'm sorry, in the preheat setting or the 212 setting or the super seam setting, it's really good for certain items and not as good for other items. Now I'm not a chef, okay? Uh, and I can't speak to, you know, I can't speak to all of the specific items that can go in here where a lot of other culinary experts can, but what I can tell you is under your preheat setting, okay, you can slowly cook very leafy vegetables like spinach or Swiss chard or collard greens, okay? And when you cook them, and I'm sure everybody on the call has heard the term low and slow, okay? You get a much more fluffier product. It looks much more spacious on uh, a customer's plate in the restaurant, okay? And it's not as wet, okay? Where when you're cooking it constantly at 212, you know, it's absorbing so much more steam and a lot quicker it's absorbing that steam. So when you get it on the plate, sometimes you see that water drain out of the bottom of the spinach or, you know, as I said, the leafy vegetable, okay? So the preheat setting for very, very thin products is absolutely perfect. Again, low and slow, right? And then you look at your standard setting for 212, right? So you're looking, you know, at vegetables that are a little bit more dense, right? You know, string or, or green beans, perfect for rice and risotto, you know, your typical setting of 212 degrees where most everybody is very familiar with cooking with, right? And then you move over to your super steam, which I think this is really where the benefits of super steam come into play, right? Because with super steam, you know, products that are much denser, you know, your potatoes, it's really, really a way for, you know, this, the cavity itself to really throw in steam, okay? And steam is still 212 degrees, 
But what I'm also doing is I'm adding heat into the cavity and I'm circulating that heat around the cavity with this fan, okay? So in the frozen, uh, in frozen products, I can set it with super steam and I can penetrate that frozen product much quicker, all right, with added heat in the cavity, all right, and really get to either frozen product or how about product uh, that your customer says, you know what, I need a four inch pan, I need a six inch pan, or I only need to load, you know, vegetables up in the two and a half inch pan, but I need potatoes, you know, and I need the volume of potatoes in a four, or six, or maybe even an eight inch pan, okay? That is where super steam really comes into play because with the super steam mode and the added heat, you're really going to be able to penetrate much more denser product, but product that you've loaded into the cavity at a much greater depth in a, in a deeper pan. Okay. And then finally, when you compare, you know, the boilerless technology with some of my competition, okay, the Sirius is the gas model. You can go right online and you can see some of the, you know, differences between, you know, the energy savings. You're looking at four pan versus three pan, but you look at the water savings and, you know, 2.2 gallons is, is tremendous, right? I mean, there is, um, you know, 2.2 gallons is absolutely perfect, uh, but I mean, 0.5 gallons, you know, you just can't beat that. Okay. And then you look at some of the differences between, you know, uh, some of the features and benefits. We have that three heat setting that I had just mentioned, you know, obviously water savings, 25% more capacity. And plus we're giving you a water treatment system as well. Okay. And then uh, moving on. And when you look at your alt air, same thing, right? A lot of energy savings, a lot of capacity advantages, um, and uh, a lot more uh, energy savings for your customer. Okay. So uh, I am going to open it up to some questions and uh, ask anybody if they have any questions. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed some information that we put out there on Countertop Steam. You know, and uh, of course, uh, in the future, I look forward to joining uh, with you guys with Chef Jason Hall. Uh, we'll talk a lot more about heavy duty steam, kettles, skillets, uh, and our brand FireX that you can see up at the top here. You can see some of the, uh, you know, some of the, uh, or at least one or two of the, uh, the models that here. Anybody have any questions? Um, my question is, um, in the past, and I'm very familiar with the old crown brand and, um, what do you, the big problem we had in the past, especially with seafood, like lobster was that that white stuff that you were that protein, the foam that it created and the problem with it filling the bottom of the steamers. What do you recommend for a high operation seafood, mostly seafood a la carte, um, operation where they're doing steamed lobsters, steamed clams, that sort of thing? I would definitely recommend uh, one that is going to be automatically draining. So, you know, all of that, you know, protein and all of that, you know, excess steam and water vapor is actually draining out of the cavity while clean steam uh, is entering into the cavity, okay? Or clean water turning to steam is entering into the cavity. Definitely an autofill, auto drain unit. Um, Kevin, could you unmute uh, Chef Jason? He just joined us. So you're exactly. talking atmospheric or pressure? Uh, no. So pressure steamers, um, no. All, if, if all the countertop steamers that we talked about were all atmospheric, a pressure steamer, right. yeah, a pressure steamer, yes, everything is going to be contained inside of the steamer. It is not going to be exhausted. No, I, get, I get that. Yeah. That's not my question. My question is concerning what style is best. I, I, I clearly understand the difference between pressure and atmospheric, but the problem is, is that regardless of the steamer in the past, I've had a big problem with the, the drains filling up and, and the so actual I, drain. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so my question is what's the best one and do you have something that specifically is designed for that seafood product in an a la carte setting? Because God knows there's a lot of seafood restaurants out there. Oh, absolutely. Uh, for an for an a la carte setting, I would I would always recommend something with the quickest recovery uh, and one that's going to replenish the water the most. Uh, I'm from a from a culinary side. I'm going to I'm going to ask Chef Jason to chime in. But from He's an actual him. okay, uh, from a culinary side, I'll ask him to chime in. But from an operational standpoint, um, you know, I can only recommend saying you know for a seafood a la carte, one with the best and quickest recovery is clearly that GSX 10 AG in a, in a gas application. Well, Steve, as always, you always do a wonderful presentation uh, filled with uh, not only excitement, but education and uh, information that we can bring on uh, throughout the rest of our day <clears throat> and the weeks ahead. Um, 
everyone tune in tomorrow for uh, Chef Rick on our Friday event here. You can join us on Facebook, uh, our Facebook page, and or you can join us live on our Zoom as well. Um, thanks again for everybody that participated today. And, and uh, Steve, again, a fantastic job as, as usual. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you, guys. And I look forward to seeing you guys in another week or two. And we'll talk a little bit more about heavy-duty steam along with Chef Jason.